How's it going? My name is Steven Christian. I'm an augmented reality mobile developer. I'm a STEAM educator and I'm a medical student. So if you know me and you've seen me at conventions and stuff, you'll know that I have a lot of stickers. I'm in many ways the sticker guy. I teach stickers making to kids. I make stickers for my own projects. Uh, I love them. And so I started thinking about, hmm, what is something that I could give to the world? And I could teach them how to make stickers. And so I decided to make a course on how you can make stickers through the process that I've developed from start to finish. And so at the end, you will have a one of a kind handmade sticker that you'll be able to share and stick anywhere. And hopefully you might end up with the line just like me. And so you can learn more about this at stuckoneisland.com slash courses, or it'll be available on Skillshare. Before we get started with the tutorial, I just wanna let you know about some things. As you know, I make a lot of this stuff available for free so that you can learn and level up your skill set, you know, at a very low cost. But there are ways for you to support me. First and foremost, I'm on Skillshare. And so go to Skillshare.com slash stuck on an island and follow me and check out some of my courses that I have there. I have all the courses you see on my YouTube channel and many more. You can also support me on Patreon at Patreon.com slash Iltopia. Here, you could have subscriptions that are monthly or yearly, and you get access to my Discord group and a lot of sneak peeks of things that are coming out soon, from comics to new courses. You have a variety of tiers and stuff that you could support, so definitely check it out. You could go to shop.iltopia.com, and it'll take you to this wonderful page that allows you to check out all my books, coloring books, augmented reality experiences, plushies, toys, and many more. This allows you to support my work and any of the stuff that I produce and put out there. All the proceeds go to funding all these projects that I release out for free on the internet, as well as paying for medical school. Because as you know, I'm a medical student as well. Last but not least, follow me on all the social nets. So what is a handmade sticker? A handmade sticker is an original work of art that you could stick anywhere. You could stick it on a laptop, you could stick it on your notebooks, you could pretty much stick it anywhere. And the reason I love handmade stickers is because not only do you get to create on paper, but you also get to engage and interact with that creation on a level that goes beyond the page. And not only that, you can share it, you can trade stickers, and you could constantly create more and more and build a collection of original art that really came from you, from your ideas, from your mind, and exists on paper and can exist in the real world. Welcome to this tutorial on how to make a handmade sticker. The purpose of this tutorial series is to teach you how to make a handmade sticker in the comfort of your home with simple tools. You don't need any heavy machinery, you just have a pen, paper, some sticker paper, and some other cool stuff to make a one of a kind piece of work that you could share with your friends and stick on your notebooks or your laptops. So the plan for this course is simple. Uh, we'll teach you the tools that you'll need. We'll teach you how to sketch on paper, transfer that sketch to sticker paper, ink the drawing, add color to the drawing, and then cut the drawing out, and then give you some tools to take away with. And so without further ado, let's get it started. So the tools are pretty simple. You'll need some scratch paper, a sharpened pencil, maybe a pencil sharpener, a light colored pencil, so I like to use a blue or a red one, matte sticker paper, and that can be found online or you can find that at the store. We have some available through our sticker making pack that is available in our store as well. A Sharpie marker or an ink marker, something that is water resistant, crayons, markers, or other coloring tools, and lastly, scissors or an X-Acto knife. 
So before I get started, I would like to add that you can download the sticker making guide in the resources section. And so if you have a hard time following me in the video, you can refer back to the sticker making guide and that will help walk you through all the steps of making a sticker. And so one of the things that we will be going over is how to go from this to this with these utensils here. The tools you'll need are sticker making paper. So this is a matte adhesive sticker making paper. You'll need a blue or very light colored pencil for sketching. You'll need a pen and you'll need a, a cutting utensil, such as an X-Acto knife or a uh, scissors. You'll also need some colors. And so you can use crayons, you can use markers. I'm using a Copic sketch marker, as you can see here. And these work very, very great for blending and uh, shading and a lot of different uh, art techniques. And so with that, let's get started. And also, you will possibly need a pencil sharpener, just in case you uh, break your lead. It can be difficult at times, but I will take you through the sticker making guide, and this will kind of walk you through all the stuff that you need to take this sheet of paper that's blank and turn that into a wonderful masterpiece that you can peel, stick, and put anywhere that you want. So in the sticker making guide, this walks you through all the steps that it's needed to take your idea and put it on paper. And not only put it on paper, but add color to it and bring it to life. Okay, so before we get started with making our stickers and sketching stuff on paper, let's talk about sketching a little bit. Because sketching is one of the crucial foundations of making a sticker or at least getting our ideas on paper. And so when we're talking about sketching, it all comes down to the idea. And so you need to ask yourself, do you want to sketch a person, a place, or thing? And so what does that mean? A person can be either a human so we have our smiley per person right there. It can also be a cat. Or even a bird. So any anything that, that moves and lives. We have places, so maybe your home. A building or maybe even the beach and things those could be anything that you could think of so maybe a car A crayon or even a TV really you can make stickers about anything anything that you could think of and so what I always like to think about is setting everything up into basic shapes so we have a circle we have a triangle and we have a square. And those are the key foundational elements for creating all these things. And so say if we wanted to make a person, we'll start with just a circle and we'll just draw a circle and that will be the head. For the eyes, we could have two more circles. We'll have one circle there, one circle there. For the eyes, one of the things that you could think about is if you have a circle, you could actually cut it into halves and quarters. 
and we'll do that with the we'll do that with the nose. And so instead of drawing a full circle, we'll do a half circle or maybe a C. And that gives us our our nose. And last but not least, we must have a mouth. And so we'll just do another half circle. And we have a smiley face. If you want to take it to the next level, you could give it some ears. You could have it cut in half vertically. And we'll have half circle for the ear. And we'll flip it the other side and another half circle for the ear. Next, we have our body. And we could do that with our rectangle. And so we'll make a rectangle and connect it to the head. We could do another half circle and that could be the hips and two more half circles for the shoulders. And so one thing that makes things great is that we can also add lines to this. And we have our legs and arms. And so one shape that we did not get to yet, but we will get to now, is our triangles. So for the hands, we could have two triangles. And then we could add lines for the fingers. And then for the feet, instead of it being a triangle with equal sides, we'll have a triangle with one side being longer than the other like that and we'll do the same thing on the other side and so notice how instead of it being equal on both sides we have one side that is longer than the other and using basic shapes we could also add some crazy hair to them and if you wanted to add a skirt you can take this shape right here and instead of it being having equal sides, it kind of bellies out a little bit like that. And so if we add that to our character, now the character has a dress or a skirt. And so with simple shapes, you can do a whole lot. How about let's do a car? Because a car would be pretty simple. And so a car, we have a rectangle for the body. We can have a half circle for the top and we have two more circles for the wheels. We'll just color those in. And then for the headlights, we could use triangles and for the tail light as well. And if we want to give it a little bit of character, we can give some windshields in the back and the front and a square for the door. Then we could add a rectangle or a triangle for the handle. And again, with simple shapes, we have our car. And so now that we have an idea how to create with simple shapes, now we can sketch on paper. So the first step in making the sticker is to get the idea on paper. So you want to sketch it on paper. So with that, you want to plan the design on what sticker you want to make. If you don't know where to start, you can use simple shapes to design an initial concept. Feel free to look at references for the design if necessary. We don't go into that on this tutorial, but in future tutorials we will. And then finally, once you have the idea, start to design it on paper. It could be a loose idea, but just getting something from your head to the paper is really what matters. And so for the scratch paper, I'll use a pencil for this and I'll actually start off with a, a circle. And it can be very, very loose. It does not matter. You just want to make sure that the ideas are on the, on the paper. And so from that, I'll start off with the circle. I'll do two more circles. 
and those will be for the eyes. Then I'll do a half circle or a C for the nose. I'll do a little, a little circle and I'll color that in and that'll be for the mouth. Next I'll draw a box. So just a square box. And this will be for the body and the torso. So I'll add a line there. I'll cut the box in half and I'll take one line and make a V from the center. And then I'll just have some more lines coming down. And so those will be the legs. And so to finish it off, we'll have another half circle and we'll cut that line there. Another half circle and we'll cut a line there and we have our feet. So now we need to figure out what to do with our, our hands. And so we'll do some half circles just for the shoulders. And we'll have his hands on his hips. So we'll do some half circles around the hips. Do some more half circles. And then we'll make a triangle on both sides. And those will be for the sleeves. And then we'll just connect the hands with the arms. And to finish it off, we'll make a T. And now we have our hands. And then for the hair, I tend to just draw some crazy shapes with it. And there you go. So if you want to pronounce the, the shirt a little bit more, you can by making some lines. And after that, we have our sketch. So we have Roscoe with his hands on his hips. Next, we'll transfer the sketch from the paper to the sticker paper. And so you could use a light box to trace or redraw the design onto the sticker paper, or you could redraw it all together. Again, you want to use a light color pencil. When you're sketching and transferring the drawing, you want to make sure not to press too hard on the pencil because you don't want big indentations on the sticker paper. And lastly, feel free to add details to the design even though you've already designed it. That's one of the best parts of the creative process is that you can constantly fine tune the design until you have a finished product. And the next thing that we need to do is sketch the design on sticker paper. So we have our design, it's sketched, and we want to, this is where we want to use our lovely sketch pencil. And so with this, you want to make sure that you have the paper on the right side. And so the, there's a matte side and there's a non-matte side. And so this side, it's a little discolored and it's probably difficult to see that, but this is a little discolored. It has a yellow tint to it. And the reason you need to make sure that you're on the right side, because this part will actually be peeled off. And so this doesn't have the sticky part on it. Uh, when you go to the white side, this has the sticky adhesive on it. And so you want to draw on this side so you could actually stick this to it. Quite often when I work with kids, they tend to overlook this, and so I always have to remind them about it, but they'll end up making this wonderful masterpiece, but the masterpiece will be on the part that you peel off, and so then they have this masterpiece on something they can't stick to. And so let's try to make sure that you have sticker paper and you're using the right side. And so with that, we're going to take our, we're going to take our sketch, and we're going to transfer it from the sketch paper to the sticker paper. And so all we're going to do is try to retrace our steps. Again, simple shapes. And if you can get those simple shapes down, then you're able to uh, make a wonderful sticker.
So again, we'll start off with a circle and I think I'll make it a little larger because we have a lot of real estate that we can work with. And the good thing about working with a light pencil is that you can make a lot of lines and it's not going to shine through as much. You won't notice it as much because it's so light. And so try not to dig into the paper with the pencil. Just try to sketch lightly with it. But as you sketch lightly, you will be able to create wonderful effects. And again, this is the sketching part. And so you don't have to be You don't have to be as strict with it, but you have to be diligent. And so we have the head. We're going to add the eyes with two more circles. A half circle for the nose. A circle for the mouth. Then we're going to go through, add the body. We're going to do that with our box. Then we're going to cut this in half. Make a V. Connect both of those. Add the legs. Add the feet. And add the shoulders, add the sleeves, add the hands on the hips, and then add the arm with the teeth. Looks like I was off a little bit, but not a problem. I'll just add this, add the extra details later and, and clean it up. And then make sure to add the shirt. And so now I'll go ahead and finish off with the hair. There we go. So we have our sketch and then we have our sketch on the sticker paper. The next step is that we're going to add ink to our drawing. So now that we have the pencil down, we want to make sure that the line work is going to last. And so by doing that, we'll add a water resistant ink to it. Beware that some inks are not water resistant, and so if you add color to it, say a marker or something like that, it may smear the ink. And so you want to make sure that you have the right ink. A good ink to use is Sharpies. And so if you have Sharpies laying around, that works perfectly. When you're adding the ink, consider using a, a fine tip for some of the small details, and then having larger tips for other details. And so I tend to use different size markers for my inking. And again, with the creative process, feel free to add more details to the design. And so now, the next thing is to ink it up. And we're going to use that with our pen. And so you want to make sure that you choose an ink that's not going to smear. And we'll go through and we'll trace over all the lines. Thank you. 
So one of the things to pay attention to is that you don't have to follow the guide to a T. Treat this as another way to uh, add some details and some ideas to your sketch. And so as you add more lines to it, it gives it a little more character. And we could talk a lot more about this in, in the character design course. But for now, treat this as an opportunity to explore your creativity a little bit better. Because just, just because you have the sketch and you have the idea doesn't mean that the idea can't change. And so if you have any ideas that you want to add to it, feel free to treat this as an opportunity to play around with those ideas. And there we go, we have our sketch inked up. So what you can do is you could take it to the next level by taking a, a thicker pen and you can do the outlines of it. And I'll actually do that right now. The next step is adding color to the drawing. Do you have a favorite color? This is a perfect opportunity to let the personality pop. You could try using crayons or Copic markers. Just give it some personality with any coloring utensils that you have. I like to use my, my Copic markers right here. So I have a total of 72 different colors and shades. And this gives me perfect tool set to do all the stuff that I like to do with it. As a creator, I really enjoy making things with a lot of color. It tends to hide the imperfections of my, my line work sometimes. But for me, I, I feel that uh, having a lot of color really adds life to all the pictures that you do. So what we'll do is we'll actually move this out of the way. We don't really need this too much right now. 
uh, but we do need a whole bunch of colors. And so with it, let's get coloring. So what I tend to do is I tend to work with uh, different colors uh, based on shades. And so I'll have a base color for the skin tone. I'll have a base color for my hair. If I could find my hair color. Yep. So I'll have, a, I'll have a base color for my hair, for my skin tone. I tend to have him in blue jeans, so I'll do a base color for blue. And one of the things that is, you know, a, a problem with having so many colors is that uh, they tend to run out and, and I'll have to replace them or replenish them. And so since we're kind of in this lockdown right now, it does get pretty difficult with that. And then I will give him a, let's say a purple, let's do a purple shirt. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. So let's do a, we'll do purple pants and we will do a, a green shirt. I think a green shirt would be nice. Green shirt, purple pants. And so you'll notice that I have uh, just about three of each color. Uh, let me do that for the skin tones as well. So I'll, I'll have about three of each color. And so I'll start off light, then I'll have a mid-tone, and then I'll have a dark, a darkest tone. And so with it, let's get, let's get coloring. So I'll go pretty fast with this. Obviously, some of my markers are, are running out. And so I may have to switch to different colors if I need to. So I'll try to lay the colors pretty fast. That way I can work over them later on. Got the first color down. Now I'll go through, start adding some shading, giving it some depth. Then we'll go over with our darkest tone. This one you don't need to do a lot of. You really just need to accent the, the parts that are getting the most shadows.
like so. So what I'll tend to do is I'll, I'll go over it with my mid shadow again, my mid color, and just kind of blend it in. By doing that, you could push the ink around. It's one of the beauties of uh, Copic markers is you could push the ink around and it gives you this wonderful blended effect. Typically what you could do is you could take a lighter color after that and you could go over it and sort of blend it in again. So there we go. We have our first couple of shades now. So now we'll move over to the hair. Okay, so the first part of the hair is done. And so now what I'll do is I will actually add a, a warmer tint to it. Give it a little bit of green. I don't know why, but I really do like the green color for the hair. It has like a brownish tint to it. It looks brown, but it, it's actually green. And this just gives it a little bit of depth, a little bit, of, a little, a little pop. After that, I'll go through and I will actually give it some texture. I always like to say that I'm like scribbling. But this sort of chaotic way of coloring and texturing really, really allows me to work with colors in a great way and layer over those colors. And I'll go back. And I'll blend it in. And there is the colors for the hair. So now that we got those over there, I will just put these to the side. We can keep track of how many colors we actually use for this. And we said that we'll have, what is it, blue pants? We'll do a, a blue violet pants. One of the beauties of this is we have the blue lines here, but you can't see the blue lines. And so it still gives us a guide, 
but this guide is not going to get in the way of us. So we'll add our third color. And the third color we could use very sparingly. So it doesn't need to be everywhere, it just needs to be in the right spots. Those right spots are just to help with the detail. Like so. So it's very subtle. What we could do is we could go over everything with the the light color again. And then go back over with the dark color. Or to just let it stand out a little bit more. There we go. We're down to our last set of colors and we are going to do our green shirt. We'll go through. And this is a really, really light green. So it's very, it's very hard to see this right now. But it will start to come to life pretty soon. As you notice, I need to be wary of just going over a lot of different colors because it can cause streaks. Like I see with the green and the brown. So now we have our darker color. Let's add some to the pits, like so. Definitely some under the head. And this will probably be our, our main shadow, our biggest shadow that we have. Starting off on the sides, and then we'll slowly add more color to the center. Until we get to the complete center where We'll sort of blend it in with the other color, like so. I'll just do that with some circles. even it out a little bit. I'm just doing this very, very lightly. The real point is just trying to blend it. After that, I'll add my heavier color. This will be to kind of just let it pop a little bit more. So I'll go deep into the shadows with the armpits. And on the sides of the feet, the sides of the body. I'll go under the head. Then I'll go back and I'll blend that in. And 
then I'll go through and blend that in with the light color as well. And there we go. We have our colored sticker. So what I'll do is I'll actually, because I don't really like that he has white shoes on. So I'll just darken these up a little bit. I'm not going to worry too much about the shading or the coloring for this. But that is our colored Colored sticker. And so we use 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. If you want to count this one, 14 markers. And that's not too bad. I've done times, there's been times where I've used, you know, 30, 40 different colors. And uh, it does get pretty hard to manage, but we went from our lovely sketch here to our wonderful. Wonderful masterpiece here. And so what I'll do is I will put away these colors and we will move on to cutting this out. Now that we have it colored, let's start to cut it out. You can use scissors or an X-Acto knife for a more precise cut. Me personally, I like an X-Acto knife because it allows me to essentially draw with a, a cutting utensil. For those that don't feel comfortable with an X-Acto knife or scissors, you can ask for assistance from somebody else, or you could use your hands and you could tear it out along the lines. One aesthetic tip is that you could consider leaving a white border around the black lines that you use so that it gives it a, a little more of a polished look. So for the last part, our goal is to trim the edges using an X-Acto knife or scissors and cut around the design. And so we want to make sure that we have a little bit of a border like we see in this sticker. A nice little white border it gives us a little bit of wiggle room and it looks aesthetically pleasing. But I like to use an X-Acto knife. An X-Acto knife is really good because they give you a lot of control. But if all else fails, you could always use scissors or you could tear it with your fingers. And so with that, I will be using a cutting mat because I do not want to damage my actual desk. And for kids out there, you don't want to damage any desks or anything because your parents are probably going to be upset about that. And so what I'll do is I will actually have a little bit of edge, a little bit of white left around the edge. And I will just go through and cut this out. And so with it, you'll probably need to use a little bit of pressure and you'll probably have to go over this multiple times but it creates a wonderful effect and so just following the black line with about you know a couple of centimeters outside of it just following the outlines and feel free to move the sticker around and rotate it And so my technique for an X-Acto knife is I always try to, to pull down. If I try to push up or anything, it may damage the blade, and I don't want to do that. And so I'll try to pull down. And try to connect these lines that I'm making with the X-Acto knife. So feel free to jump around from position to position. You don't have to go in a straight line because sometimes it, it, it just doesn't feel as fluid of a process when you 
when you do that. So feel free to play around with it a little bit. So it looks like I will probably have to go over this another time because some of the the blade just is not as sharp as I probably want it to be. And it's starting to rip some of the paper because of that. So it just means it's time to get another X-Acto knife blade. I'm about halfway through this. Okay, so got the first pass done, so I'm actually going to try to see if I can rip it out by separating the edges. And if not, I always go through and I will go through the lines that I made again just to cause a little bit more separation. So I'll just play around with it. It's never going to be perfect. Uh, one thing you learn with doing stuff that's handmade is that there's, there's a beauty in the imperfections. Those imperfections were what we call character or style. And there are often things that you won't be able to recreate. And so that's why handmade stickers tend to be pretty unique. Because you could have the same design. And you could have the same technique with the same person. And there's always going to be little differences between each sticker. And those are what make it make them so special. By going over with multiple passes, you always get really it becomes a lot easier with each pass. And so people tend to think of multiple passes as doing more work. And in a sense, it kind of is, but all you're doing is perfecting it. And so it's not necessarily more work, it's just a, you know, another part of the process. Okay, I think this is almost done. I'll go ahead, pull it off, and voila, there we go. Let me go ahead and just clean up this side real quick.
Oh, it looks like we lost a we lost a, a part of it. Oh well. So from there, we have we started off with this, our lovely sketch. And we finished with our actual colored one. Now that we have our sticker sketched out, drawn out, and cut out, you have a one-of-a-kind masterpiece that you could do anything with. You could share it with somebody, you could put it on a notebook or a laptop, you could give it as a gift, you could trade it with someone, and more importantly, you have the skills now to make more stickers. And so, like everything else, use this opportunity to create more and more stickers create more and more inspirational pieces that you could share with other people. Again, thank you for taking the time to learn a new skill with me. My name is Steven Christian. I started Doodle Life as a platform to share different creative tools and skills with you in hopes of empowering you and educating you so that you can create opportunities for yourself. So feel free to let us know how you like this tutorial. Again, you can follow us on social media at Iltopia, I-L-T-O-P-I-A, or Iltopia.com, or doodlelife.com. Again, my name is Stephen Christian, and thank you for watching. <laughs>